Hey, brother. Ben, today I wanted to discuss one of my favorite characters in all of Pixar, Anton Ego from Ratatouille. He's such a mystery. I mean, where did he come from? But today we're going to answer that question and find out how this charming little boy turned into this Dracula-esque food critic. Anton Ego, the Grim Eater. An appropriate title, not just for his review's ability to shut down your restaurant, but also to actually kill you. As was the case with Gusto in Ratatouille after Ego reviews his restaurant and it loses him a star. Something that ends up being so depressing that Gusto mysteriously dies after of heartbreak. Heartbreak? That's weird. I mean, it's almost as if... Great cooking is not for the faint of heart. Ah, uh, if only listen to your own advice! Actually, fun fact I learned while researching this video, the actual the actual Michelin star rating only goes to three stars, not five, so I don't know how Gusto got five stars, but changa, that must have been some good food. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Anton Ego. Man, I love this character because despite his limited screen time, he totally steals the show and I just go back and forth on him all the time. Is he good? Is he bad? Is he just doing his job? Where did he come from and why is he taking everything so personally? At first, it definitely doesn't seem like he's very much of a good guy. I mean, as his name suggests, he has a bit of an inflated ego to the point where he has a giant painting of himself hanging above his desk in his office. All of his framed news articles are the ones where he tore apart a restaurant. His office is shaped like a coffin. His typewriter has skull imagery. I mean, he kind of looks like a vampire. He only dresses in black. Well, with the exception of his bitchin' purple scarf. I mean, whew, man definitely has taste. I'll give him that. But then that's sort of the point of him, isn't it? I mean, he's a critic. He's supposed to offer his take on things. It's his personal opinion and taste that keeps people reading. And it's kind of hard to say that, well, despite all the death motifs, he's not doing a really good job. Just look at all the notoriety he gets wherever he goes as a food critic. How many food critics can you name right now that are not also judges on Chopped? Also, side note, how freaking great is Chopped? Ego may have a negative outlook and relish in the demise of others, but you could argue that that's a legitimate strategy as a critic. As in, the harder you are to impress, the more impressive something must actually be when it does finally get your seal of approval. But despite the legitimacy of such a strategy, I have to say, a few things just don't add up. Namely, his overall lack of enthusiasm about food. It's okay for him to not like the food of a particular chef, like Gusto, and even for him to disagree with him about the philosophy of food that anyone can cook because Ego just takes food really seriously. Those are both valid opinions, but what I don't think is valid is his reaction to the news that Gusto's restaurant is returning to popularity under Linguini or, well, I guess, Remy's cooking. How could it be popular? I mean, there's a new chef. As a food critic who claims to love food, you'd think he'd always be on the lookout for a, you know, rising star. But... He's not. He's so consumed by the idea that his review is no longer the final word, that someone is challenging his work, that he's not even willing to give credence to other people's perspectives. You provide the food, I'll provide the perspective. And despite his words that he wants to give Linguini a fair chance, I think it's pretty clear that his true intentions are to rip him to shreds. It's only Remy's miracle ratatouille that brings him back to his childhood home and catches him so off guard that he finally loosens his grip and returns to the food enthusiast he once was. And I say return because I think how we see Ego at the end of the movie is how he used to be at the beginning of his career. After all, we do see him as a kid where he appears to come from a loving home with a mother who serves him amazing food. And just look at his caricature in the paper next to his column. They depict him as a pretty happy guy. So... What's with all the death motifs? Well, my theory is that somewhere along the line, his mother 
died. Okay, stay with me here. At the end of the movie, Anton Ego declares Remy the best chef in Paris after his bite of ratatouille brings him back to his childhood home and his mother's cooking. So, using the transitive property, if Ego believes Remy's food is the best in Paris and Remy's food is comparable to his mother's, then he believes that his mother's cooking is the best in Paris or was. I'm also betting he was raised by a single mom since we don't see a wedding ring on her finger. And based on his final career choice and how he viewed his mother's cooking, I think we can assume that he saw his mother as something of a hero. As such, it's easy to see why he might shift gears into all of the death imagery if she died. He viewed her food as the best, and therefore, when she passed, so did the best food in France. It also makes his animosity towards Gusteau more understandable. Understandable. His motto, anyone can cook, is offensive to Ego because he puts his dead mother's food on a pedestal. And for the new best chef in town to claim that just anyone could do what she did is an insult to him. And don't worry, I hear what you're saying. Just, Jay, that's all great, but it's all conjecture. Do you, you have any actual physical evidence? And the answer is yes, I do. And for that, let's take a tour around this old lady's house house and compare it to Anton Ego's flashback. The number of objects that are exactly the same is staggering. They both have these wire baskets, they both have the same kettle, the same woven baskets, the chairs have the exact same pattern cut out of them, they each have the same china shelves, albeit different china, and they even have the same little mantelpiece curtains. Who even has little curtains like that on their mantle anyway? But Alas, despite all of the similarities, it is not the exact same house. The layout of the stove and sink and mantle and door just don't line up. Which is why I don't think this is Anton Ego's mother, but instead, his grandmother. And before you say, uh, Jay, Anton Ego is way too old for his grandmother to still be alive, it is definitely not impossible. We don't know when his mother had him or when her mother had her, but there are definitely scenarios under which this is possible. And besides that, I've got more. Even though it's not the exact same house, it's definitely the same kind of house in a rural area with large open fields around it and low stone walls. If Ego's mother was a single mom and didn't have much money, which I'm thinking she was because as Colette calls it, she fixes Ego a peasant dish. Ratatouille. It's a peasant dish. Then chances are she probably wouldn't make it too far away from where she grew up. So it's really no surprise that the two houses look so similar. And check out this profile next to the wedding picture in the old lady's home. It doesn't look much like her, so I'm betting it was her husband and wow, does that profile look familiar. My guess is that after the death of his mother, his grandmother inherited a lot of her old things and that's why we're seeing them all in this old house. Plus, cooking was obviously an important part of Ego and his mother's life, and Remy says the old lady falls asleep every day watching, wait for it, the cooking channel. And when it comes to good home cooking, often it's the parents who teach the kids how to cook. So it's possible the ratatouille we see Ego eating here as a kid is a family recipe. And if so, then it makes sense that Remy is able to recreate it exactly because the very person he's been watching cook his entire entire life is none other than Ego's grandmother. Ben, my question for you and everyone else is, what do you think? Did Remy actually learn cooking from Ego's grandmother? Love to hear your thoughts in the towel section down below. These socks are amazing. Guys, thanks for watching as always. Please like this video if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Pixar videos. If you'd like to see me discuss the origins of another Pixar villain, Darla, you can check that out right here, or you can check out who the true villain of Toy Story was right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today. I'll see you in another life, brother.